You're listening to Insight from Capital Public Radio. I'm Jeffrey Callison. Sin by Silence is a new documentary about women who went to prison for killing a partner who had abused them. The film shows tonight at the Crest Theatre in the Sacramento Film Festival. Joining us is the filmmaker Olivia Klaus and also a key person in the film who inspired it, Brenda Klubine. She's a former prison inmate, did time for killing her abusive husband. Olivia, tell us how the film got started. Do you have a personal connection to the matter? About eight years ago, I started on this journey of Sin by Silence. And I had always known about domestic violence, but felt it was something that didn't affect me. It was something that happened to other people. Until I got a phone call from a friend one day who completely shattered my world. She needed help, and I had no idea what to do. And it started me on this journey of, how do I help? Why is she still with him? What are the options? What about the kids? And it really led me to this quest of a colleague of mine, Dr. Elizabeth Leonard, who wrote the book Convicted Survivors, introduced me to this group, Convicted Women Against Abuse in prison. And these women are the ultimate survivors. They got to the point where they had to defend themselves against their abusive husbands. And really, these women hold the keys to Pandora's box of secrets that is domestic violence. And so it inspired me to make this film because we can really learn from them the tools on how to prevent this crisis. Brenda Klubine, tell us how you ended up in prison. Unfortunately, in a matter of moments, my life changed for the next 26 years. Um, I was forced into a position of having to defend myself one night. And ultimately... Against your husband. Against my husband. And ultimately, I was sentenced to life in prison. I spent 26 years there, and I was released last October 2008. Uh, You were sentenced to life, but you were released after 26 years. Uh, Why was that? I had a 15-year-to-life sentence, so um, I served way past what I would normally have served, and I was released through the courts. You killed your abusive husband, but... um What were the circumstances for you about that that mitigated it? Well, what happened was is I had restraining orders. I had police reports. I had um, photographs that the police had taken. I had eyewitnesses. I pressed charges. There was still an outstanding warrant for his arrest for felony battery against me at the time of his death. So all of these things, however, didn't teach me what I needed to know about how to survive and how to stay out of that relationship. We're talking about the film Sin by Silence, about women who go to prison for killing a partner who abused them. My guests, Olivia Klaus, the filmmaker, and Branda Klubine, a former prison inmate who um, you can see in the film. When you were in prison, you founded a group uh, for women in your position. Tell us about that. I got to a crossroad during my incarceration where I ne- I was no longer sure what was going to happen. And I kept hearing this my story from other women. And I thought, well, you know, maybe some of the circumstances had changed, but it was all basically the same. And I kept thinking, there has to be something, some kind of way that we can all gather and not just hear each other's stories, but be able to heal from that and be able to move forward. And I then I so eventually I founded, which was a great fight, <laughs> Convicted Women Against Abuse. What, what do you mean it was a fight? Well, the Department of Corrections didn't really want it. They weren't interested in that type of a group. Which department are we talking about? Where were you? California. Let's listen to a clip from the film Sin by Silence. Um, well, let's just listen to it and then we'll talk about it. If I'd have shut up, I'd have got hit a lot less. If I'd have just backed down, it wouldn't have been so bad. It took about seven years. And seven years into this group, somebody said, if he didn't hit his friends and he didn't hit his boss who made him angry, he made conscious decisions while he was angry. That means he made a conscious decision that you weren't worth holding back from. Well, that's a pretty powerful moment from the film Sin by Silence. Um, Olivia, who is that? What's the setting? That is um, Virgil. She has been incarcerated for 23 years now um, for killing her abusive husband. And that took place at a meeting that while we were filming. And it was really a type of setting. Convicted Women Against Abuse meets twice a month and it's a support group for women. And they come together and just talk exactly like Virgil just talked. And they try to heal and they try to understand what they went through to really change their role from victim to survivor. 
And so it's it's hard to grasp after all of these years of abuse that they went through and all of these years of inc- incarceration, all the layers of guilt and shame and embarrassment that they have. And this group really provides healing for them. Brenda, you were sent to prison in 1983. I'm not sure what the state of the law was at that time, but nowadays it, battered women's syndrome is well known. And there's a well-established legal argument that, that could have applied in your case. Did your lawyer try and make this case at the time? What essentially happened was is there had been no precedent set yet in the state of California at the time that I was on trial. However, because of convicted women against abuse, I was able to get in contact with several legislators and ultimately a public hearing on domestic violence, a legislative public hearing, was held at the California Institution for Women in 1991. The um, effects and what ended up happening ultimately because of this hearing, in 1992 in January, the battered woman syndrome became part of the Penal Code Section, 1107 of the Penal Code. And it also became part of the DSM-4 for, for mental health professionals to use it in cases in evaluating these women. Obviously, prison is never a pleasant place to be, but what's it like being in prison under your circumstances and knowing that if it had happened later, you would have had a legal argument? Well, ultimately, people used to say to me, you know, how how do you feel? Other people aren't coming or they're getting out and you're still sitting here. And as I said then... It was never about me. It was about changing laws to help other people. It has to help somebody. And ultimately, the laws trickled down again, and it also affected me. I was able to be released under 1473.5, which is a new um, battering law under battering and its effects that came into effect in 2002. Olivia, what was it like making the film? Was it uh, a problem in any way? It was a long journey. Eight years it's been, and there weren't any necessarily any problems. Production is always hard if you're um, filming inside prison, but these women are amazing. They open their hearts and their minds and their stories to me, and you can just imagine what it's like hiding behind the shame of not only their crime, but also their past of what they've been through. And it's really a remarkable group. And it's amazing, just like Brenda was talking, these women change laws for in California. They change laws for the future battered women. And it's unfortunately, most of them still remain and are paying the price. What sense did you get from the staff, uh, both in the prison and, and in the, the department, the Corrections and Rehabilitation Department, about the film that you were making, the topic, the people you were dealing with? Actually, the warden at the prison at the California Institution for Women and the support groups there, they really encouraged this film. They greenlighted it with no problems because I started volunteering with the group before I ever approached to make a film about them because, like I said, at first it was to help my friend, and I was trying to understand domestic violence. And then a couple years later, once the women realized I worked in production and filmmaking was my background, they approached me to tell their stories. These women have had tons of media done. Back, Like Brenda was saying, they had legislative hearings at the prison. They had a lot of media because these women back in 1992 brought battered women's syndrome into play. And so it really, it, it really this whole journey, it, although it was long, it is well worth it because now we can help other people make a difference and help change lives. Yes. And, and finally, Brenda, you got a lot of time to make up for, I guess. Yeah, but it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Sin by Silence, it's shown tonight at 6 at the Sacramento Film Festival at the Crass Theater. My guests were Olivia Klaus, the filmmaker, and Brenda Klubein, who served 26 years in prison after killing her abusive husband. She's one of the people that the film mainly focuses on. Olivia, Brenda, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much Thank for having you. us. Thank you. You're listening to Insight from Capital Public Radio. Coming up, the Chinese-born classical pianist Di Wu is coming to Bear Valley and Modesto. We'll be right back. <laughs> 